Hey, Chris Lipe here with the isolated vocals. Yes, lead vocals and background vocals for Thriller, Michael Jackson. Lots of you have been asking for this one. I'm excited to go through these. I've been able to collect, since people started asking for this, various different resources for these isolated vocals. And so we're going to go about this one in a cooler and a little bit different way of analyzing these. First of all, those of you who have seen my Dirty Diana video, we talked a lot about Michael's singing technique and uh, approach and tone and grit and stuff like that. We're not going to be talking as much about his technique, how to sing like Michael Jackson here. Instead, we're going to be making more observations about his approach and making observations about the harmonies and what this means for our creativity. There's a lot to be learned. None of us are going to ever sound like Michael Jackson. One of a kind vocalists, so much so. And so I think it's it's more beneficial for us to, yeah, you know, spend some time studying the way he sings, but let's study the attitude behind the way he sings and really have that in our minds as we go through these isolated vocals. And then I have, towards the end, I have some neat things to point out about the the backing vocals, the gang vocals, and some ways I think that the uh, modern production, when they re-release some of these songs, has ruined what was initially a very pure yet well-thought-out performance. By the way, if you'd like more help with your vocals, production, singing, discovering more about what your voice can really do, the best place to start with me is by clicking the link below and joining my free voice course. I'll help you in a lot of ways from there, but that's the best place to get started. All right, let's do this. Ooh. It's close to midnight. Something evil's lurking in the dark. Under the moonlight, you see a sight that almost stops your heart. You try to scream, but Jared takes the sound before you make it. Okay, so... I told you we're going to be talking more about the approach than actually singing like him. And here's some really interesting things to hone in on. Under the moon. How many of us have ever even tried to sing any word? Under the moon. Under, under. Like, that seems so foreign to most of us in terms of how we would normally sing. But it's these subtleties that make, I mean, other than amazing skill and talent, that make his voice what it is, but also make it really, really interesting. We don't have to sing this song to start internalizing some of these approaches. Yeah, it's going to feel really, really weird. But in order for us to really add variety and excitement to our voice, trying some of these things in our own contexts, don't, don't sing this. Just sing something else like, heart, instead of just falling off the end, heart. It might not even be like what he's doing. Pull his approach. Pull what you perceive his mindset to be. Try things with your own voice. You start to freeze. And so it looks you right between the eyes. You're paralyzed. Because this is dinner. Dinner or not. <sighs> and no one's going to save you from the beast about to strike. You know it's dinner. I'll never get over his exhales, right? And there's this consonant there at the end, too. This is trademark Michael Jackson, but just be asking yourself, how can you put these in your own voice, in your own contexts? How light he is there. So good. You hear the door slam and realize there's nowhere left to run. All right, now here's another one of those things. Listen to this door slam. Door slam. Listen to how door, door slam. How he, he really upped that rasp for a minute and then it got rid of it. What if we just took a note and went, ah, 
and practice singing in a couple different ways. Raspy, adding compression, adding stage whisper, lifting your desk while you're singing a note. Yeah. And then cleaning it up. And let's do it within a single phrase. I realize there's no one left to run. Ooh. You feel the cold hand. I wonder if you ever see the sun. Ever. You close your eyes and hope that this is just imagination. Listen to how that H. And hope that this. And hope. There's this sense that he's he's gas not gasping because that'd be I'd be inhaling but like sighing with that H and hope not just and hope he used now when I just did what I just did there's this sense that the H got in the way of me singing that note and hope there's a sort of tension awkward thing that's happening right but if I sigh into that H and hope and hope what follows also is, is maybe less important than the expression that I let out with that H. But I'm using the H as part of the line instead of something that gets in the way. Huge, huge, huge. Girl, but all the while, you hear a creature creeping up behind. You're out of time, because this is dead Now listen here, he's not thinking about this so much. You're out of time. Yeah, yeah. But it's worth noting the way he arcs phrases, the way that like this right here, you're out of time is so gritty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you're out of time. I'm not making any sort of claim to be sounding anything like him, but his approach is helping me be more expressive with my own voice. That's really why I keep repeating that and why I want you to take that mindset. We have to with guys like Michael Jackson. Because this is dear love, dear love night. There ain't no second chance against the thing with 40 eyes, girl. There's one of those exaggerated H's again. It's very easy for H's to get in the way. They don't get in Michael Jackson's way. For your life inside of Kella, Kella. Night creatures call and the dead start to walk in the masquerade. The, that hard consonant at the end is awesome. But also, this is some amazing writing. This The way that this melody comes in. And you don't hear it quite as much without the context of the music. But this melody, it's always struck me as just an absolutely amazing work of art in and of itself. Night creatures call. And the dead start to walk in the masquerade. Ugh. There's no escaping the jaws of the alien this time. This is the end of your life. Ooh. <gasps> They're out to get you. A snap right there. Ooh. So to get awesome. You. There's demons closing in on every side. Ooh. There's another one of those awesome consonants, right? Side. Ah. Ooh. They will possess you unless you change that number on your dial. And now is the time for you and I to cuddle close together. Yeah, all through the night, I'll save you from the terror on the screen. I'll make you see that this is the night, the night. Cause I can feel you more than any ghost would ever dare try. Woo so let me hold you tight and share up, Kella. So another approach thing that I love is and you can see this when he's performing live, but I love that they've captured it in the studio. It's this idea that he's he's playing with his different resonances, right? You know, the woo head voice aspects. But I don't think my head voice even goes that high naturally. Woo! And then, but then coming back down. We don't have to be able to to hit the notes that Michael Jackson hits to have this sort of playful thing put in our voice. Woo! Oh! Oh, 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 oh,
composer with your own voice. Be a painter with your own voice, using different resonances. So let me hold you tight and share up, Kella, Kella, ow, ow. Love it. Cause this is still up, still up all night. Girl, I can feel you more than any ghost would have dared try. Woo-hoo. So let me hold you tight. I love the double, double inhale there. So, so into it. And it's, this is, a lot of people think really hard about, oh, should I inhale here? Or how should I inhale? How should I breathe? Really good singers have been able to stop thinking about how they should breathe. Breathing is support for their voice. It's not a goal in and of itself. And if you're thinking too much about breathing, you can't perform because you're stuck in focusing on uh, the path to performance. Really, really important to think about. If you are overthinking your breathing, you are hurting your performance. You're hurting your voice in general. Practice proper support, practice breathing, but don't think about breathing as an end. It is a means to an end. That requires training, yes, but it also requires you to throw off the concerns and simply get into a piece of music and perform. Let your practicing and and your support studying exist, but don't focus on it while you're trying to perform. That balance can be hard to find. I can help you with that, but it also happens by simply throwing off concerns and simply getting into things, letting yourself make mistakes, letting yourself fail. So let me hold you tight and share up, get a damn, ow! I'm gonna throw you tonight. Ooh, babe, I'm gonna throw you tonight. Oh, darling, I'm gonna throw you tonight. Ooh, babe, yeah. I'm gonna throw you tonight. Ooh, babe. Ooh. Try that. Even that right there. That's a Michael Jackson thing that anybody can do. Ooh. Ooh. How can you go from your head voice all the way down and just sigh into it and change the tones and textures and the sensations that you feel as you're doing it? Experience it. Uh, I'm going to throw you tonight. I'm going to throw you tonight. There's another really, really cool dynamic opportunity for us to take note of. I'm going to throw you tonight. Remove the notes. I'm going to thrill you tonight. I'm going to thrill you tonight. I'm going to thrill. Arc that phrase. Practice multiple levels of dynamics and different types of engagements and resonances within one short phrase. I'm going to thrill you tonight. I'm going to thrill you tonight. Lots of singers don't do that. And then they wonder why their voice isn't interesting and boring or, or why it's boring. This is why we're not doing stuff like this. I'm gonna throw you tonight. I'm gonna throw you tonight. Thrill a night, babe. Yeah. Thrill a. Ooh. I'm gonna throw you tonight. I'm gonna throw you tonight. Ooh. I'm going to throw you tonight. Ooh, baby. So cool hearing the the differences between each one of these little ad-libs. The subtle, t- the subtle differences. Oh, girl. Right there, the mic proximity changed. Oh, girl. That's neat. Ooh. I'm going to throw you tonight. Tonight. I'm going to, going to, going to throw you tonight. What was that? Tonight. Gonna, gonna, gonna throw you tonight. Now, let's listen to some of these background vocals, these gang vocals, in different contexts. This won't take very long, but stick with me. There's some brilliant ways that things were layered, and we get to hear them broken up. But, rumor has it that with some of these re-releases, and and the ones that I'm going to be showing you are stems from the re-releases. They added pitch correction. 
They pitch corrected MJ. What? This is when I read this, and I don't know if it's true, but I think I hear it. In fact, I heard it, and so I went out and and went. I thought I heard it. I went out and, and did some research. But we have the opportunity to listen to what I believe are pitch corrected versions, but also the unpitch corrected versions. Of course, the unpitch corrected versions are cooler. And if you have this record on vinyl, not re released, you get to hear you get to hear the real thing. Uh, but it, so it's a little bit of a bummer. But it's also kind of cool to hear uh, not only the arranging that's going on. But, oh, wow, like, he really didn't need pitch correction. And, uh, but it's neat to hear, like, what pitch correction did to it. It doesn't, like, totally ruin it. But, anyway, listen with me. Gripe if you like. I certainly am a little bit. Here we go. You start to free. You start to free. You start to freeze. You start to freeze. You start to freeze. Absolutely looks you right between the eyes. So really, really need to hear the different different uh, ways that he sang those. Slightly different textures. Um, and then to hear them all together is super cool. Hey, listen carefully here. Now, one of the reasons that I feel like pitch correction is on there, I feel like I'm hearing it, is that the formant, one of the giveaways when you isolate, particularly the background vocals like this, is the formant the changes a little bit, but the pitch stays the same. That's awfully hard to do. It happens once in a while with, with background vocals in particular. Uh, it's awfully hard to do, though, without some sort of electronic manipulation. And so that's, that's what I'm hearing. I, I could be wrong, but also... When you listen to this, and then in a minute when I play the un unpitch corrected versions, you hear these subtle dips in the pitch when they're singing all together, and you hear the, the same formant changes, but you also hear the dips in the pitches that you don't hear here. But all the while, but all the while, but all the while, but all the while, This is, I love this chord. I like in this video how sometimes they um, they play like the, the whole chord and then they go into it and sometimes they play them isolated and then they go into the chord so you can get the context. So cool. You imagine how hard that was to record all those chromatic atonal sort of things the chords going on that that would have been so difficult even for someone with a great ear my goodness oh. okay now i have isolated background vocals that i know are not pitch corrected you try to scream you start to freeze. You hear on that. You hear a little bit of that at the end there. Freeze. You hear how it goes up. 
You didn't hear that in the other version. And right there too, right? Like you hear pitch problems. There's, it's not problems. Pitch pro, if that's not the right word. You hear pitch variation, which I think it sounds it sounds good. Especially there. Listen to how you hear his voice as he's descending those pitches. Or even not descending. You hear these sort of subtle breaks. There's dips in pitches. And in the in the other uh, video that we watched where they were breaking things down, stuff's, you, you heard those glitches and the formant modifications, but you didn't hear the pitch dip like you do here. Night. Yep. He's got great pitch. You close your eyes. Yeah, right? You you even hear the the little bit of dissonance in the chord. But all the while. It's really hard. I mean, back then when they didn't have uh pitch correction or auto tune or anything like that, you just had to be as on as possible and the singing those chords with one voice, that's difficult to do. You hear that? No! I can't imitate it. You can't plan those things. But like that little blip in there, those were those were smoothed out a bit. Okay, listen to this. It sounds amazing. It sounds less perfect. And it sounds to me more textured. I might, there might be a bit of placebo or, or something going on, but I don't think so. So mint. This is the one that really went, for me, was like, hmm. Listen to how it goes just a little bit sharp here. They ironed that out. Not on this version. Now is the time through the night. So incredibly fun to hear this stuff and experience it in multiple ways with these isolated vocals. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the approach that I took on this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you haven't already, be sure to watch the Dirty Diana video that I did a little while ago. We dive into more particulars about his actual voice there. And again, if you're looking for a vocal coach or a voice teacher and you'd like my help, click that link below and join my free course. See if my approach, my deeper approach, jives with your goals and what you'd like to learn, and we can work more together from there. We'll talk soon.